from San Angelo, Texas, to your front porch. It's Reflections Upon the Precious Book Divine. Radio worth listening to. Right to you each weekday from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, right here on the Gospel Radio Network. My friends, and welcome to Reflections Upon the Precious Book Divine. My name is Rick Pope Joy. I have the distinct privilege and the wonderful pleasure of serving as your host, uh, today, I hope that uh, people do get the uh, notification that we are uh, live and running today. I was uh, detained uh, uh, beyond my ability yesterday to be able to uh, uh, be here. I advertised late today. I went to a uh, uh, pharmacy to pick up some uh, medication, and uh, uh, but uh, I am uh, doing fine. Uh, you'll have to put up with this little nas nasally uh, 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 item today, and, uh, but I'll do, I'll do my dead level best. I, I do have some, uh, uh, vitamins and I got some medication. So, uh, but I'm doing fine. Uh, you want to keep Miss Mona in your, in your prayers. Uh, she is, uh, at this time she is in the hospital and they're taking good care of her. And, uh, we, uh, are continuing to pray for her uh and uh, want to continue to do that uh they are making sure that she gets uh, uh some steroid shots and things such as that and uh uh keeping her on some uh uh probably uh, well we've conversed back and forth the same kind but she's weak and uh uh taking oxygen so uh, uh we do want to uh request your continued prayers uh, for her and uh, I know others uh, have come down with this as well. I know that uh, don't want to mention any names necessarily, but uh, we do want you to remember others in our uh, uh, in our knowledge that has this. And so uh, we certainly want to pray for them. Uh, let's see here. I got just a couple of things I want to uh, uh, make mention of. I, I do want to remind you that if you're here today and this is your first time, uh, that this is study hall for the brave, the spiritual minded Bible student. And, uh, so that means we make absolutely no apologies for the content of God's word or, uh, in any sense, what God said or how God chose to say it. That's up to him. And it would be presumptuous of us, uh, to, uh, apologize in any sense, uh, for that. I have actually heard uh, preachers apologize for uh, uh, what they are about to say, and they're about to uh, tell you uh, the doctrine of God. My friends, never apologize for telling people the doctrine of God. Stop it uh, if you're doing it, and uh, it's uh, fairly presumptuous of you, and you don't want uh, to meet God having uh, said that I went around apologizing for you. So enough of that. Uh, uh, I'm glad that you're here, and uh, I pray that you are prepared and poised uh, to study, to meditate, that's right, to reflect upon the precious book divine. This is a live radio, TGRN, uh, WJHF 106.9 in the Florence, Alabama area, and it is a live Facebook uh, broadcast of Reflections. And what that means is, that you can actually give me a call at 405-428-2440. Once again, that is 405-428-2440, and you can join us. If you have a question or a comment about uh, the content of the lesson today, uh, also, uh, that, all, that means that all of your comments on either TGRN discussion window or the Facebook Live uh, I am reading as uh, this program is going on, and so many of those uh, will make the air. So don't put anything in there. I generally make some uh, discernment, uh, but uh, don't uh, don't put any stupid stuff in there if you don't want it to make it to the air, okay? Uh, well, let's see here. I want to say good morning to uh, uh, Sister Ferris from Alabama, uh, Sister Sainer from uh, uh, South Oklahoma, uh, there's Sister Woodall from uh, uh, northern Wisconsin, Sister Higgins from south Texas. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, who did I miss here? Uh, can't see anything I missed. I know we have several others that will be joining us uh, during the uh, uh, broadcast, and uh, certainly uh, 
And by the way, I did not send a little notification to Javon Jesse. Uh, one of y'all might do that. He is generally uh, here. I know others will be joining us for our study. Uh, some will uh, make note when they come in and some will not. Uh, Brother Furness, I see is here uh, from Purcell, that's central Oklahoma. And uh, Sister Jensen, uh, all the way from uh, way up yonder in the state of Wisconsin. Good to have everyone with us today. Let's see here. Uh, I do want to continue to remind you of the Standing in the Gap lectures at the Nesbitt Church of Christ, uh, January 27th through the 31st. And uh, so uh, that's 2021, by the way. We're not going to back up into 2020. Uh, no, uh, I think I've had about enough of 2020 uh, that I want. I think most people have. Uh, they're ready to uh, go to 2021, except somebody told me the other day that Mad Max, the movie Mad Max, I don't know if you've ever watched that or not. Uh, uh, not that I'm a fan, but uh, that it was actually shot for the year in the movie was 2021. So uh, just saying. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sister Higgins. I appreciate you letting uh, our good brother Javon Jesse know. I know he says sometimes he does not get my uh, uh, get my notification. Uh, brother Joe Dale Wilson, uh, uh, Oklahoma, North Texas boy, uh, not a boy, gentleman. Uh, good to have you. Uh, many of you are familiar with Denny Wilson, who has joined us on many occasions. Uh, this is the, the uh, this is the original, uh, and uh, so uh, this is uh, 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 Brother Denny's dad, and uh, always good to have you on the program, my brother, and appreciate all the work that you do uh, as well, upholding uh, the uh, banner of Christ. So let's see here. I can't think of uh, I can't think of uh, anything else. Uh, let me do. I do need to. Uh, uh, unlock that just in case. And uh, then uh, we want to pull that up because we're fixing to get ready for a song, but I do want us to have a word of prayer and then we will have our song together. Shall we pray? Almighty God and Father in heaven, we thank thee so much for thy tender mercy, thy loving care that you have blessed us with. We know that uh, thou art a majestic and holy God that we do not deserve to be within thy presence, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, you have drawn us closer. We're thankful for the sacrifice that he made. We're grateful for the gospel that tells us the story. We're grateful for the church of Christ that we can be a part of. And uh, we pray our heavenly father that we might take thy message throughout the whole world. The world desperately needs. This is an information war, and uh, we are engaged in that information war. And we pray, our Heavenly Father, that we might disseminate uh, the uh, information that you have granted us uh, the privilege uh, to sow uh, in the hearts and minds of men. We pray that they might engraft that gospel into their hearts and minds, and that they might obey thy word, and that they might truly be blessed, and that this world might be uh, brought to uh, its knees before the cross of Christ. I do ask our Heavenly Father that you be uh, uh, with our beloved brother, Denny Wilson. I know that he was not feeling well. Uh, I ask that you pray uh, be with uh, my wife, Miss Mona, as she is in the hospital uh, and uh, weak. And uh, we pray that uh, uh, those that are taking care of uh, uh, her might do so in a fashion to hasten her strength and uh, hasten her back to us. We're appreciative, our Heavenly Father, of these means that you have blessed us with to share thy word and to, as brethren, encourage one another. And we pray that uh, uh, the message might go out uh, from this uh, program, from this uh, radio broadcast, uh, that thy word is true and uh, that... Uh, uh, every, every word is true. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you would be with us now. Grant us uh, thy glory and thy, uh, to be able to see thy glory and thy majesty. In Jesus' name, amen. And down the road, carrying such a heavy load. Sinner, lay your burden down. You're walking on heaven's road. 
Walking on heaven's road, I got to lay down my heavy load. Jesus said he'd walk along with me. Praise God, glory, hallelujah. Come singing all the way. I got sunshine in every day. Once you come along and join me on that heaven's road. Ain't no people crying there. Ain't no sadness anywhere. Ain't no need to shed a tear. You're walking on heaven's road. And when you're walking on heaven's road, I gotta lay down the heavy load. Jesus said he'd walk along with me. Praise God, glory, hallelujah. I'm singing all the way. I got sunshine in every day. Won't you come along and join me on that heaven's road? <laughs> Young folks walking hand in hand, singing with the angel band. Old folks ain't so tired and worn, they're walking on heaven's road. And when you're walking on heaven's road, I gotta lay down my heavy load. Jesus said he'd walk along with me. Praise God, glory, hallelujah. I'm singing all the way, I got sunshine in every day. Won't you come along and join me on that heaven's road? You come along and join me on that heaven's road. Oh, I love that song. Love the encouragement uh, that it uh, blesses us with. And uh, together we can uh, uh, we can uh, uh, be encouraged to continue the work that God has so blessed us with. Can't imagine any other kind of life. I've lived a other kind of life, but I couldn't imagine going back to that kind of life that I left in order to be blessed in Christianity. And my friends, we have established a very simple proposition uh, during this. Uh, uh, week and I uh, realized that we did miss one, but uh, uh, our proposition has been very clear, I think, and uh, that is that miracles are no longer needed today as their purpose uh, has been fulfilled. And so we're really getting down as we talk about the purpose. And when I say purpose, uh, we should actually put purposes of miracles, and we're going to discuss that uh, to the best of our ability today. But I will tell you, I have uh, in the very front of my New Testament uh, a, a series of uh, seven purposes of miracles. These are not of uh, my originality. Uh, generally, we stress one primary purpose in Mark 16, 20, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That is a primary purpose, but uh, I believe it was, in fact, uh, fishers of men seeking to be more precise has listed four. Some of them really overlap, uh, but they have listed four, and I'll deal with those in just a minute. But in reality, I think uh, my good friend, Brother Gil Yoder, uh, who has, uh, uh, he and I worked together in uh, southeastern Oklahoma uh, for a couple of years, and we did, uh, had many, I, I learned a lot uh, from Brother Yoder uh, on uh, many different occasions, but uh, he taught the first class, uh, first series of classes, he and Ron Cosby on uh, the Holy Spirit for uh, OABS, and I've learned a great deal from him over the years, and uh, consider him a uh, wonderful friend. And so I make no claim to originality in any sense of the term, but I, I would suggest to you Gil would not either, because uh, just in the, uh, in the organization of uh, his lessons, uh, uh, we're both getting this from the Bible, and if it's not in the Bible, I want you to toss it out anyway, right? So uh, that being said, if you uh, look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 10, as we have uh, uh, mentioned before, 
uh, the Bible says, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. There is something that is partial and there is something that is perfect. There is something that is going to be done away with and uh, uh, there is something that uh, is going to uh, remain. Uh, yes, brother, sister, uh, senior, uh, I remember those classes there uh, right outside of my office where we all gathered together about what uh, six of us and uh, uh, we gathered together for those classes. They were some wonderful, wonderful uh, classes at that time. And uh, so there's some there's some partial things and then there are some perfect things. Uh, the perfect remains. The partial is done away with. Uh, the only problem here for most people who espouse miracles today is the fact that the partial is listed. The perfect is listed. Charity, verse number eight, never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues. Now, prophecies don't fail uh, in the sense that somebody, prophet, a prophet of God, prophesied and it didn't come true. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that there will become a time where prophecy will no longer be needed as far as having a prophet to prophesy on uh, on the spot. So uh, there be tongues, they shall cease. Will there be knowledge, they shall vanish away. We know in part, we prophesy in part. Miraculous knowledge, all of that is, uh, 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 is uh, going to fall away. Uh, and uh, no longer going to be needed. Now, what we have been uh, addressing is when. When is that time? And we've dealt a little bit with that. Uh, uh, now, as to whether or not they're archived, that's a question uh, 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 Sister Woodall uh, asked. Uh, I don't know if the archives go back that far. Sister Woodall, contact uh, Trent Thrasher and... Uh, uh, he would have uh, that information uh, for you, and so uh, uh, that'll that'll uh, take care of uh, that question. But here's a couple of things that I I think we need to understand. We have not defined. Remember, early on Monday, I told you that we're going to get to a definition phase. We have not defined our terms with regards to miracles. Generally speaking, uh, those are things that should be understood. Uh, but poorly defined words almost always lead to some kind of misunderstanding. And in fact, what we see constantly uh, is the fact that uh, uh, when, you, uh, uh, when you allow people to define the terms, they'll win the debate. And so you can't just allow people to define their terms. Well, let me give you a couple of good uh, items here. I utilize the King James. I do so because I believe it's the best translation out there. Uh, and uh, I don't believe that there is a need for any other translation. Now, I don't want to get into a translation debate. That's not our purpose here. But uh, I do want you to be able to notice what I'm talking about here. Uh, in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse number 15, uh, you have in the King James, it says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now, the word prevent there, uh, and by the way, these are proper definitions. Uh, that, that's not a misuse of the term. That is a proper use of the term. But the word prevent in this uh, verse means proceed. It doesn't mean stop. It means proceed. In other words, before they can come, then there has to be something else. So the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep, or the 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 uh, those which are alive. We will not prevent. That is, we will not proceed them which are asleep. They will come first. That's the definition of that term. Now, it's an archaic definition, but it is a problem. Look with me at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse number 7. The Bible there says that the mystery for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. 
Only he that now led us will let until he be taken out of the way. Now the word let here uh, in this verse means to hinder. That is uh, only, uh, it says, uh, uh, only he that now letteth or hinders will uh, hinder uh, until he be taken out of the way. Now, again, this is uh, not a bad translation. It's a perfectly legitimate translation. It's just, a, I say, an archaic uh, term uh, or use of the term. It is not really archaic in this sense because we still use it in relationship to tennis. In, in tennis, when a server, even in ping pong, when a server hits the net on the serve, the, the judge will call out let. He didn't call out net. It sounds like net, but he calls out let. In other words, the, the ball has been hindered uh, and uh, uh, so that's how this word is utilized. So having a proper definition certainly makes it important in our understanding of 1 Thessalonians 4.15 or 2 Thessalonians 2.7. So it is important. Now, I've heard this uh, uh, aspect for years, and it's certainly true today with regards to uh, many false doctrines, but novel doctrines require novel definitions. Now, I want to repeat that again. I want you to know uh, doctrines require novel definitions. I mean, who would have thought before 2020 that we would even have to define the word assembly? And yet now, now you have to use a term, no word, it's not virtual assembly, but in person assembly that the Bible demands. Not that you cannot get together virtually. We are getting together virtually at this time. But there is an assembly at least once every Sunday that must be an in-house, in-person assembly. But who would have ever thought that we would have ever had to define that in today's world? Now, sometimes D definitions differ due to the speaker or the writer uh, being either concise or precise. And, and this is uh, uh, where oftentimes you'll hear a preacher say that the purpose of miracles is to confirm the word and they will move on. In other words, they're, they're, they're giving a generic uh, uh, aspect. They're not being as concise uh, or precise as they uh, can be, but they don't have time uh, to spend all day on that one. Can you imagine if you had to explain everything that you said? I mean, every word that you said, you had to then stop and explain it. You, you could never communicate properly. And so the having the proper definitions is absolutely essential. And sometimes we speak in general terms, and sometimes we speak in specific or precise terms. Now, a, a, a concise, uh, that is a, uh, let me just say, a quick uh, manner would be to say it's to contract. Like I said earlier, the Fishers of Men uh, evangelism tool wanted to be a little bit more uh, precise, and so they listed four. Now, some of these you can see how, in reality, it is the confirmation of the word. For example, they would list, it means to prove the deity of Jesus, and that is true, but what it does is confirm the word Jesus spoke. Now, that would be John 1, verses 1 through 3, John 20, verses 30 and 31, Acts 2, and verse number 22, the confirmation of the fact that Jesus is who he claimed to be but they would list that separately because then they list Mark 16, number two, to confirm the word, uh, Mark 16 and 20, and uh, of course, Hebrews chapter two, verses three and four. They would also say it, mean, it, it is a means to verify apostleship. And I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask some clarification on this point. 
Now they would uh, recite Second uh, Corinthians twelve twelve uh, in regards, uh, and uh, I want to because I'm going to need to clarify this. I want to go uh, to these passages and note them that Paul says truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience in signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. Now, the problem here is, and this is just a point of clarification, the problem here is that uh, these do not necessarily, just because you can work a miracle, doesn't mean that you were an apostle. Now, let me clarify that, see? That's, that's an important element. Philip worked miracles. Stephen worked miracles, yet they were not apostles. Uh, the Corinthians were miracles, and yet they were not apostles. So what is it that Paul is saying when he says the signs of an apostle uh, were wrought among you in all patience and signs, wonders, and mighty deeds? Well, number one, uh, 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 first and foremost is that an apostle could work all the miracles. So he uses the word signs instead of sign. Okay, so all, now Philip could not work all of the miracles, neither could Stephen, neither could anyone else, only the apostles could do that. But number two, and this is more specific to the clarification, uh, they are the only ones who could transpose the miracles to someone else. So think about from this vantage point, the signs of the apostle brought among you. What were those signs? Well, I transferred uh, miraculous ability to this person and to that person and to that person. That's what Paul means in 1 Corinthians 9 and uh, verse number uh, 1. Well, let's look at verse number uh Two, he says, if I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. He's not talking about their conversion. Anybody can teach the gospel and a person be converted. He's talking about uh, chapters uh, uh, 10 through or 12 through 14, their miraculous ability. That was the seal of his apostleship. Nobody else can do that. Now that's Acts 8 and Acts 19, and we've already discussed that, so I don't want to get back. I just wanted to clarify that point. If you use the fissures of men material, it's not just to prove true apostleship, but I think what they had in mind there was you cannot claim to be an apostle and then work miracles and not be an apostle. Now, let me show you why I say that. In Revelation uh, chapter 2 and uh, verse number, uh, beginning in verse number 1, Jesus is talking to the church at Ephesus, and he says, uh, verse number 2, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst bear them which are evil. And thou hast, notice this, tried them which say they're apostles and not, uh, and has found them liars. How do you try and apostle? Okay, <laughs> that goes back to our discussion the other day when people went, oh, no, no, we don't want to tempt God. No, 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 I don't want to tempt God. I want to try you, <laughs> see? Uh, you, you transpose miracles from your hands to that person, and I'll know that you are an apostle. And, uh, and by the way, I'm not saying anything in the opposition. I use the fissures of being material, but I always try to clarify some points in regards to this. Now, the fourth point is to fulfill prophecy. Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17, Jesus worked miracles to fulfill prophecy. That is true, and that is a purpose of it. Uh, but again, it goes back to the confirmation of, of the word. And so I want to, I want us to talk a little bit more about this. So here's what we've discovered. Poorly defined words almost always lead to misunderstanding, right? Novel doctrines require novel definitions. So we don't want to misuse God's word. We want to make sure that we allow God's word to define uh, God's terms. And uh, then I want you to add this. Poorly defined words make for bad logic. 
reason properly when you start out with a poor definition. Uh, and, and and this you, you see this in use every single day. And so this is important. So when we use the word miracles, here's what we mean. There are some brethren out there that are redefining the word miracle, and uh, they don't think it has anything to do with supernatural, uh, but a miracle. But listen, it's any act. This is important. Any act in the universe that supersedes the laws of nature. Any act in the universe that supersedes the laws of nature. Providential acts which occur within the confines of natural law are not miraculous. Stop using the term, please, please, I beg you, stop using the term uh, miraculous for that which is uh, uh, only providential. Now, all miracles, and I want to I want to clarify something. All miracles are powers. Remember, there are powers, signs, wonders. All miracles are powers. But not all miracles are signs or wonders. Now you're going to say, whoa, 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 you got to back up and I'm going to clarify this in this lesson. This is an important part of the definition. All miracles are acts which supersede the laws of nature. All acts which supersede the laws of nature are miracles. But now, could there be a miracle, a power from God that was not witnessed by man? Thus, it had no sign attached to it. See, a sign, a sign means that it's pointing to something. So somebody has to see it. Uh, the word wonder we've already discussed means ob observation from my part of the miracle. So if I didn't see it, I can't wonder. If I didn't see it, then it's not a sign, you see, that is uh, uh, in, in, the, in the true sense of that term. So it's important that we understand that aspect of it. Now, with that in mind, I want to show you how this works. It's, it's, to me, it's it's very simple. Once, once you... Uh, uh, once you begin to look at these items, okay, creation, creation. Uh, who was there uh, to see uh, creation? Nobody was there to see it, right? Uh, uh, you weren't there. Uh, in fact, up until the sixth day of creation, uh, uh, nobody was there, uh, even Adam and Eve, uh, I guess, uh, it, Adam was asleep uh, when God took his rib, and so uh, uh, there is no uh, no one around to see the great creation of Genesis one one and and following. Yet it was the power of God, right? We know if you look at uh, uh, Exodus chapter twenty, uh, and I do want us to look at a couple of uh, uh, verses here. I don't, I, I can't spend. Uh, uh, too much. I, I probably have to postpone the timing a little bit uh, of miracles until uh, tomorrow, and that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, but if we get there, we get there, and if we don't, we don't. But look here at uh, Exodus 20, beginning in verse number nine. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy maidservant, nor thy maidservant, for the stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days did the, the, uh, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in the, and he rested on the seventh day. Uh, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And so God made all things within that six days uh, of uh, creation. Notice with me Psalm 36. Uh, Psalm uh, uh, 33, excuse me, uh, verses, uh, well, let's uh, begin in verse number nine. Psalm 33 and verse number nine. Uh, look back into verse number six, sorry. Uh, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made and the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Now verse number uh, nine. He spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. 
See, there is, there is power of God uh, that caused creation. Nobody was there. It's not a sign. Nobody was there to see it. It's not a wonder. Nobody was there to see it, but it is the power of God being exerted on men. Um, uh, how about, uh, uh, how about uh, the incarnation of Christ? John chapter one, verse number 14. Uh, the word became flesh and we beheld his glory, the glory of the, did, did anybody actually see the incarnation of Christ? It'd be like seeing the wind. You can't see the wind. You see the effects of the wind. And so no one could see the incarnation. It was proved by the miracles, right? So you could observe the miracles and they would be signs and wonders, but that was a miracle that you could not actually see. And, and so uh, 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 incarnation, one of those. How about uh, uh, revelation inspiration? Now you think about this, only uh, 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 how would I know that a person received a revelation from God or how would I know that they are inspired by the confirmation of the word? You can't see inspiration. You can't see revelation. Now I want you to, I want you to think about uh, uh, those items. Now, creation, Revelation, inspiration, incarnation are all unobservable miracles. They are the power of God, but they're unobservable. It takes something outside of that miracle to be able to demonstrate it. Okay, now, how about the destruction of the world uh, in 2 Peter chapter 3? Everybody's going to see that, right? Uh, that is certainly, uh, but but it's a miracle that has not occurred yet. So when we say that there will, there's no miracles, we're not saying that there will never be another miracle. There will be another miracle. When Jesus is revealed, when that great day of judgment comes, there's going to be a miracle. And that miracle is the power of God exerted and it's certainly going to be a sign. <laughs> it's going to be a whole lot of people wonder, right, in regards to that. Uh, so uh, that's something yet in the future. How about the resurrection? When, when all the graves are opened up, I'm not talking about the resurrection of Christ now, but the general resurrection, uh, uh, people saw the resurrection of Christ. He spent 40 days, as I mentioned earlier, 517 eyewitnesses resurrection of Christ uh, at that just that are listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So they they saw his resurrection. Uh, that was a verifiable miracle. It was a sign and it caused awe or wonder. But now the resurrection at the end of time, it has not occurred yet, right? It's going to occur on that great day, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning in verse number 52. So let me go over these seven with you uh, at, so you'll have all seven. There's creation, the destruction of the world, the revelation, inspiration, confirmation. Those are each three different uh, aspects, incarnation, and the resurrection, the general resurrection in the last day. All those, those are the seven purposes of miracles. Now, after a purpose is fulfilled, and here's where we need to get to. This is my whole point in this lesson. Uh, all uh, when a purpose is fulfilled, you have scaffolding. You're going to paint the inside of a building, and it's uh, several stories. So you bring in some scaffolding. You get the painting all done. Uh, what do you do with the scaffolding after it's done? You take it down. You 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 get it out because it's no longer needed. Uh, the same is true with reference to building a house. There are a lot of things you need to build a house, but not everything stays at the house when it's done. Uh, the same is true with uh, all buildings. And so uh, God's creative acts occur over a six-day period of time. And by the way, then he rested, Exodus 20 and verse number 11. 
uh, he, he's not out there creating universes. His creative act stopped. Now, the point we made earlier uh, is that Jesus is not the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow in the sense that people use that verse out of context. But it is true that his nature never changes. He's not like the gods of, uh, uh, of uh, the idol-worshiping world wherein they change based upon the whims of men. No, he does not. Uh, but uh, he doesn't do everything the same way. Uh, and, and we noticed that earlier. The incarnation was necessary one and only one time. Hebrews 10 and verse number five. That's why I emphasize and I have emphasized uh, probably since the first time I heard Brother Omari French, a good friend of mine, uh, mention this point uh, out of Hebrews 10, five. God had prepared him a body. He only needed the sacrifice of that body once for all time. That incarnation happened once never happened again. No need for it, you see, because his sacrifice was sufficient to take care of the sins of the world. The general resurrection of the dead and the destruction of the universe, they have not occurred yet. But when they occur, their purpose will be fulfilled and there will be no need for that miracle again. God's not going to continue to destroy the earth. He's not going to continue to uh, raise the once it's done, it's done. Doesn't need that done again. Well, what does that leave? Out of that seven, it leaves inspiration, revelation, and confirmation, right? That's all that it leaves. It leaves what we emphasize in Matthew chapter 16 and uh, verse number 20, the confirmation of the word. Well, revelation and inspiration. 13 and 10 all needed uh, to uh, go. So here's where the timing comes in. And I told you I was going to try to get that in today. And I think maybe in the last 15 minutes, we'll be able to do that because I only really want us to look at maybe four or five Bible passages uh, that talk about timing. And by the way, God's timing is impeccable and uh, is always essential. If God gives you a time frame, then he keeps his time frame. Uh, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. In other words, at the proper time, at the right time, God sent forth uh, his son. Uh, and uh, it was uh, it was not uh, God. You know, the premillennialists think that God was out of tune and uh, didn't get his timing right. Uh, but Paul says, oh, no, he got his timing right. And uh, this is the proper time in which Jesus died. So I want you to notice with me in the book of Micah. Micah chapter uh, 7 and verse number 15, there is a, in, in speaking of the establishment of the church and other things in the era of uh, uh, the establishment of the church, Micah wrote these words, according to, to the days of thy coming up out of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, I will show him marvelous things. Now notice that, according to, introduces a simile, that is a comparison of the days of marvelous things with the days of them coming out of Egypt. So what was the time frame? of the children of Israel when they came up out of the land of Egypt, 40 years, right? It's noted that uh, in uh, 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 Acts chapter 7 in the sermon that Stephen preached uh, as well. Uh, but uh, it is uh, a time frame according to, in the, it's going to be similar, there's going to be marvelous, works done during this time period, and this time period is going to be the same as the coming out of Egypt. You can't be any clearer than the prophecy of Micah. This indicates that the marvelous things that God would do during this would be the same time period. So 
since the church started at uh, 30 AD, uh, that time period of Micah would take us where? Well, I'm not a mathematician, but I think I can get to 40 from 30, and it's going to end up being 70, right? So in 70 AD, uh, that time frame was going to cease. That's the time frame God put on it, not me. Now, you can see the same thing in Joel's prophecy uh, in Joel chapter 2, and that prophecy is repeated by Peter, you remember, in Acts chapter 2, right? Now, Joel 2, 28 through 32, uh, prophesies of the beginning of something in these last days. Actually, Joel says in those days, Peter says in that those days, uh, a proper translation of that would be in the last days, right? It shall come to pass. This is Joel's prophecy, chapter 2 and verse 16 and 17. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. And then he quotes from Joel 2, 28 and following. As no, these people aren't drunk. This is the beginning of something. It's the beginning of what? The last days. What's so important about the last days? Because I want you to notice this. Uh, not only does he refer to a time of the beginning, but now notice this. Beginning in, uh, uh, well, let's begin in, in verse number 18. I got to keep an eye on my time. Uh, verse number 17, he's going to pour out of his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men see visions. Your young men shall see dreams or dream dreams. And the servants and the handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. I shall show wonders in heaven above, signs in earth beneath, blood, fire, vapor, smoke. Uh, the sun shall be turned into darkness, the, the moon into blood. Now notice this before the great and notable day of the Lord. So there's a time frame. This is the beginning, and all of these miraculous uh, items are going to take place before the great and notable day of the Lord. Now, that great and notable day of the Lord is a reference to the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. Again, the same 40-day time period. Now, if you add to this Paul's prophecy in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, note that Paul speaks, again, I, want to, I started with this, I want to end, I want to, I want to uh, deal with this as well. There are some things that are in part, right? They're referred to as temporary, childish things that should be, that will be done away with. The partial things were in contrast to that which is perfect, right? Things were things that were permanent, things that were mature, things that were greater and would remain. Now, the partial list in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, is to remind us of what Paul has already said in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that those nine spiritual gifts would go, that they weren't designed uh, for the church forever. The things that remain, he lists them right there in that text, faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. Now, so he talks about the end of miracles there. Notice, uh, by the way, and I made, I made reference to this a couple of times, and uh, I want you to make sure you do your own homework. I want you to study this, but this word perfect is never used to speak of the second coming of Christ. See, our, 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 our denominational friends want to point, no, 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 that refers to uh, the second coming of Christ. That word is never used in relationship to the second coming of Christ. Oh, but it's about heaven. No, no, no. This word is never used to refer to heaven or the so-called millennium that they see coming. Never used of that. The, the, it's never used of Christ. Uh, when, that, it's, when that witch, not a he who, uh, is coming, the word perfect refers to something that is brought to completion. 
uh, and uh, it's opposed to that, which is partial. So let me give you, I know we got a, a few minutes here, and I've, I've kind of hastened a little bit toward the end, but I want to pause right here because I want to give you uh, some uh, verses to hang your hat on at this particular time. All right, so let's look at James chapter 1, and uh, let's begin, let's look at verse number 21, and then I want to verse 25. Verse number 21, James 1, 21, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and the superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Now notice there, it is referred to in James 1, 21 as an engrafted word. Something must be, this word must be engrafted in order to do its saving uh, ability. Now notice, uh, uh, so there can't be hearers of the word only. You must also be doers of the word. Notice verse number 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect, there's our word, into the perfect law of liberty, that word that has to be engrafted into your mind, into your life, uh, now you have to looketh into, that looketh, T-E-T-H. This is why the King James is such a beautiful translation. It's precise. Notice here the E-T-H, looking continually, right, into the perfect and continuing therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deeds or in his life. And uh, so here we have a reference to that which is perfect when it shall come. Notice with me in 2 Peter chapter 1 and uh, verse number 3. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us, notice power, uh, that shows you the miraculous ability. Uh, power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him who hath uh, called us unto virtue and virtue. Uh, and so uh, there is a, uh, a perfection of the word of God that is given unto me in Jude verse three. Now in Jude verse three, Jude talks about that uh, uh, that uh, word that was given unto him. And I want you to notice, just notice the phrase or the phraseology that he utilizes here. When he says, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, which was once for all delivered unto the saints. And so there is, by the way, Ephesians chapter uh, four, we, we dealt with just a little bit, uh, the timing till the perfection of the word of God, then you would have the perfection of the church. And so it is important that we understand that. Now, uh, Sister Woodall also mentions uh, Hebrews chapter nine and verse number 16, for where a testament is, there must have also be the death of the testator. Uh, for a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, there is no strength at all while the testator uh, liveth. That also uh, is a uh, verse for us to remember. So now think about this. Signs, miracles, and wonders are not needed today because their purpose has been fulfilled. You see, John chapter 20, uh, 30 and 31, then would say many other signs, therefore did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not, now notice this, written in this book. But these are written, written in a confirmed word. It's been verified, it's been confirmed as Often authentic, it is true, it is the word of God. It's been verified by the miracles, the signs, and the wonders that followed. And so he says, by believing this word, you can be saved from your sins. My friends, that 
Uh, Paul teaches us that, that God gave miracles and miraculous spiritual gifts uh, and that they were temporary. God gave them. They were for a purpose. The purpose is no more. They were not designed for the whole of time. They were to end when the faith was finally and fully revealed to man. My brother, you have my brothers and sisters, we have it right here. Well, listen, our time has gone. I, I, I knew that I was going to have to rush if we got through it, but uh, it has been a, uh, a, a wonderful class. I appreciate it. We'll deal more on the timing of those passages as time uh, permits later. Uh, but I want to thank you for joining me today and uh, this week uh, on Reflections Upon the Precious Book Divine. Tomorrow, Lord willing, open mic Friday. Get your questions in early. We already got one by Sister Sainer a couple days ago. So God bless and have a wonderful day.